We will now go to item number six, planning and zoning board policy modifications. Madam Chair, this is the Torrance County Planning and Zoning Policy that was adopted by the Commission on July 22, 2009. And the Commission at the last meeting did express some interest in reviewing this policy as well as the members. So that is why this item is on the agenda. Okay, thank you. We're now at the table. <clears throat> Commissioner Freiberger, would you like to begin? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, my concern was I've had constituents call and ask how come each district's not equally represented. And so I would like to see that uh, that each one, each one of the districts has equal representation on it. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Tapia. This was my concern a year ago um, when we put into place uh, the, the other board members that were those spots that were needing to be filled. I felt at that time that um, two spots per district was the right way to go. And so for me, if that's the verbiage that needs to be changed on the bottom, and I don't know, for those that don't have it out there, um, it says appointments to the extent possible that Torrance County Commission shall attempt to appoint interested members from six different areas of Torrance County in the effort to protect the interest of the entire county. So for me, the easiest way to do that would be to appoint two people from each district. Does that go into that those two people represent my feelings on that district? No. I have nothing to do as a as a, the district to they're just there to represent that district and then this way you don't have four from one district and one from one and one from the other it's just an even playing field so that was a concern of mine a year ago okay um <clears throat> I completely understand where both of you are coming from on this matter. Um, this is one of the reasons why this was important to me when I came into office as well, because there were no term limits on that board, and there was no representation, really not a lot of representation from my district at that time. So um, I share your concern in that respect. There has been um, some discussion in regards to um, actually what each person would bring to the table as far as at one point there was um, people that represented different fields of interest whether it was water or or different things like that so i think we just need to make a decision that how we're going to go about these appointments do we want to just you get to come to the table with two appointments i get to come and you get to come is that where we're hoping to go with this no, I think we need to put an ad in the newspaper like we do, and there's people that will have that passion to do something for their community that will then come before us. And if, say, in my district, there's one person that actually looks at the newspaper and, and looks at the ad and comes to us, then we would hear their, their reasons for wanting to be on the board. And then if, as a commissioner, I needed, we needed to find somebody else that would be able to fill the responsibilities that are asked of them, then that would be the only play as a commissioner to help help somebody. But you when know, we put the ad in the newspaper, just like we always do, and depending on where they're from, then that's how we do it. That that's just my suggestion. Okay, Commissioner Freiberger. I'm I'm more inclined to. Uh, I mean, if we're going to do that, then we may advertise for those specific areas. But I'm more inclined to want to appoint uh, two people uh, from each district. Okay, so rather than, um, so let's say we advertise like Commissioner Tapia has requested, and then once those people have applied, you want to look at who applied from your district and then be able to appoint? Well, if we advertise, then are we going to exclude them? If we have a real good potential and uh, they're not from the right district. Well, then that's where the, you're getting the, the, the two people from each district. So you're, yes. you're saying you're saying that you just want to you just want to bring to the table two names. Yes, or three names, and then we interview them 
and the big, the two names, or, or if it's one name from the district that needs to be filled, whatever it may be. I, just, I think it's more fair across the board to, to give everybody in the county an opportunity to come to, come to the table. Madam Chair, will you take a comment? Um, let us continue our discussion at the table first, and then at that time we'll, we'll take comment. Thank you. Well, I, I really feel that um, as commissioners, that's one thing that we are able to do is make appointments. So, you know, I understand where you're coming from, and I see you wanting to be fair across the board. But if we advertise countywide, then we're going to get applicants from throughout the county. So if we get an applicant that's not from one of your particular districts or my district, um, that would just be a pool. Okay, so and are you going to only pull names that are in your district? No, no. It, 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 say we put we put the, the advertisement out there, okay. and I have five people that show up that or you know that want to be in in my district. So those five people then would come and present why they want to be there, and then we would then be able to pick two out of that five. Now, say one person showed up in your district that came from the newspaper then you would be able to go out and find somebody else who you would feel like could represent that board well, and then you would have, we would have to agree with that. You see what I'm saying? So we're pull, we're kind of doing both, is what I'm saying. But what if you have none? What if everybody's from my district? Then we have, then, then it's up to that district to then go find two people. I would rather bring, say, three people for two positions uh, out of the out of the district. Right now, we're only looking at replacing two that are on the on the board. And I would rather, say, bring two people in, and they present from District One why they want to be on the commission, and the commission appoint one of the, out of the two. But I would rather have the appointment. Uh, then take a shotgun approach. Well, the only thing we're doing it that way is that then it doesn't look like you're picking people from your district because you want them sitting there. And that's why I'm trying to... That's exactly I'm trying to be, Well, I'm trying to be open to letting whoever has that passion and feels like they can stand and do the job of planning and zoning board. Because there's some really great people out there. and to give them an opportunity, not just because, you know, I might not know that many people. So it might be hard for, say, me to go find somebody. Where this way, we're going to pull from both both ways. You have a comment? You answered my question. Oh. I was just going to ask if you didn't have two potential candidates apply from the newspaper ad, then what would we do? From mm -hmm. the then it would be that district commissioner's job to go find somebody. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to put the ad in the paper and uh, have them come to interview as to where they live. If we have people coming from one district, then we need to spe specifically look at the district that was left out. Mm -hmm. And then it's up to that commissioner to then go find somebody who's capable of sitting on planning and running. But I think doing it the other way, we're at least giving the opportunity to those who want to come and sit on our planning committee. And then the end result is, is that the three of us still have to agree on that person. And really, I mean, if you have two candidates in mind, all you have to do is ask them to please respond to the ad. Right. You know, then they would come forward to, you know, like the interview process like that was done last time. But then everybody's expected to do the same thing. And this way, it's not favoritism that, you know, you want two people and I want two people and then we got our two people in there. I, I want to eliminate the talk that's going to happen on the outside if we take that approach. Okay. Now, I do think that um, items six and seven are two totally different um, items. So I don't want to take comment on um, item number seven. But I will take comment on item number six for two minutes. Anyone that wants to come forward and talk about item number six, now would be the time to do so. Sorry. Item number six is reflecting the 
Item number six pertains um, just to the policy modifications. Um, my name is Lawrence Romero. I'm the uh, planning and zoning and code enforcement officer for um, Mountaineer. And um, just to, a comment concerning the representation, obviously planning and zoning is a big deal. It's real important. Um, nobody knows what it's like in my district as well as the people who live in that area. Uh, so to me, I think that it would be almost imperative that we have someone to help with the Planning and Zoning Commission be a part from our area. So um, what I would recommend and ask for is that we be allowed to bring representation from our district to assist with Planning and Zoning. Now, I hear you about it's difficult to get people of quality and just people in general to participate. But you know what? That's our responsibility. That's our district to look out for us. So let's put that on us and say, if we're going to have representation, then we got to perform. We've got to do our job. So and if we don't, then it's on us and not on the commission or the county to make sure that it happens. So what I would ask is that you, that you allow us to participate in a way that is beneficial to us as well as to the county. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Romero. So, Mr. Romero, are you saying that you agree that there should be representation from every district? Absolutely. Okay. I, I absolutely think that's important. Okay. I know it's hard. You know, it's uh, difficult to, uh, to get people to participate and drive and be a part of the meetings and all, but you know what? You want things done, you got to participate. You, get, you have a responsibility to your community, to your fellow neighbors, and if you don't feel it, then you don't get it. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, Joy, could you just explain the process of this particular policy is amended, um, what the time frame would be to amend it, and if there was any public meetings that had to happen, and how we would go forth if we if we chose to go forward? Madam Chair, I don't believe there's any public meeting requirements. This is a, a policy that the commission developed for a board who is a, an advisory board of the commission, so it's at your pleasure to amend this policy. If you amend it today, contingent on language, and Steve and I will go back and work out the language, get it approved by legal, and it will be in effect immediately. Okay. <clears throat> that kind of leads me to my next question as far as when this would take effect, because I really, I see the importance of having representation throughout the county, um, but also, I do feel like we do have people that are currently serving under a term and I don't think that we should amend something in the middle of their term or maybe make it effective when maybe we have two appointment, two people term out, then introduce this policy then. But again, that's um, you know just where, I, where I'm coming from, so why don't we discuss that? I feel that we should do, uh, you know, go ahead and make the appointments to people coming in would start their two-year term. I think it's unbalanced now. In another six months, four months, ever how long it is, uh, to me, that time period is, uh, I believe it should be as soon as possible. Well, I disagree with that, Commissioner Tapia. Um, I believe that if we're going to take that approach and um, take two, are we taking off the, the, the two that we just put on? What's, what are we doing? Which ones? Who's going to be turned <coughs> out um, in four months? Steve, would you come Steve. up and work with us on these? Uh, if you'll look at this chart here. I'm looking at it. In the uh, fiscal year 2012-2013, which is 
coming up here in June. Uh, our two three-year uh, board members, uh, Douglas Mills and Johnny Romero, have the option to begin their second three-year term. In the two-year term category, uh, Jason Quintana and Edwina Hewitt have the option to begin their second terms. Uh, they're the only ones that uh, are currently at the term limit. So with knowing that, for me, um, being that Ms. Hewitt is running, um, at what point then Mr. Wallen, can you clarify on at what point now that she's running, does she need to remove herself from the board or she can remain until after the primaries? How, how is that? Well, All right. All right. Well, we have two members. Yes, members. Jason Quintana and the board. Oh, okay, that's right. Uh, you know, it's, it's really at their option. If uh, if they sit as a board member on a planning and zoning matter uh, on the uh, on the P and Z board, and they they hear a case, and then they're subsequently elected, uh, then they more than likely will need to recuse themselves from hearing it as a commission. But there is no. I mean, there's no black and white requirement that they have to absolutely, you know, resign at a specific time. Uh, we had this come up before with Commissioner Freiberger, and he stated that once, I guess you didn't have opposition in the general election. As no, we did not. So once it became obvious that he was going to become a commissioner, at that point he, he resigned from the board. So. It's really a, it's really an individual matter. Uh, you know, my my recommendation would obviously be that they resign uh, to avoid any conflict because having a three-member county commission, if we have one person that has to accuse themselves, obviously puts this thing on a potential log jam or loggerhead. So. <coughs> That would be my recommendation to them, but that's once once again that's a personal uh, decision that they've got to make. You guys have to excuse me. It sounds like Joy and I have got the same uh, I've got the allergy situation going <laughs> on. Well, with that being said, I would just you know I would make that request to then Mr. Quintana and Miss Hewitt that they would then resign themselves off of the board then that way we would then do our due diligence to find somebody to replace them and then you know for the next four months then they are they're busy you know working and, and campaigning that would be my recommendation and then this way you know we're doing what we need to do to keep the, the planning and zoning board together doing their job and we're able to do ours and I, I think the alternative to that would be to amend the terms under the policy uh, and, and just change the terms of office and that kind of goes back to recreate what I know Steve and the board worked hard to try to, to get uh, set up at some point in time but that would be the alternative. Okay, my comment on that is um, when Commissioner Freiberger was on the planning and zoning board and he was running for office, I didn't feel like he should have to step out of planning and zoning in order to run for office, and I'm going to continue to maintain that. If um, you're currently serving and you want to work to continue serving as an elected official, um, I don't think that you should be, um, not really punished, but I don't think that should be the consequence of wanting to continue to serve in a higher capacity, so I would not support that. So. I think that we need to deal with item number six um, on the policy modifications, but it is kind of running into item number seven as well. So I think that we should take some public comment, and I think we've all kind of said where we stand on the issue, and I will have to call for um, motions, but prior to that, I would like um, the, com the public to go ahead and comment for two minutes. Pat?
My name is Pat Winter. Um, I have really a clarifying question and then one um, comment because I did serve on planning and zoning for a long time and it's near and dear to my heart and I think it's really vital to the county that it, um, that it re remain a non-politicized um, advisory board because um, really the decisions that are made by planning and zoning <coughs> should be made in accordance with the zoning ordinances and subdivision rules and the comprehensive land development policy um, so that everyone has a, a uh, fair and level um, field and knows the rules before they um, come to the board. So I, I definitely think that your idea of advertising is um, a very good idea because it, it um, then maintains that, that independence. My clarifying question is though, when you advertise, if you are looking for representatives from a specific district, then is that the way your advertisement is going to read? If you know that you need people from District 1 and District 2 to balance out a board, then is that specifically what you're advertising? I would say yes. I would say yes. <laughs> Thank you. Who would like to be next? And, and in the past, what would happen is, you know, they have to fill that position. So if we applied for it, we, you know, we got it because of the fact that nobody from the other districts would do it. I mean, you're probably going to find yourself with that situation even now, even though there is more people showing interest, which is good, because I think it's good. Okay, I think the fact that you have them, because it's been off balance, but not just in our area or whatever, but also, you know, I want to have you understand that, uh, you know, when I got in there, I wasn't for my district. You know, I was for everybody. I'm from Florence County. And so I, I share the views of all of Florence County. And uh, that's one thing you have to take into consideration. Also, the fact that uh, when you pick people, make sure that you don't have five realtors sitting on the board, okay? You need people from every single deal. And also, always try to maintain somebody that keeps up with the little communities along the line. It's a real unique deal, and in the past, they had no representation that actually knows how, that has lived there all their lives. That's one of the reasons I, I stepped on, because I felt that the, the board <coughs> of the board didn't understand what the people along those mountains have lived all their life. So, in making your decisions, make sure that you guys keep that in mind. And let's not put, it, it's good to have, uh, you know, people represent, like, somebody in the real estate so they can help us along when we're making our decisions. But you don't need them all. So, uh, my, my, my deal on that is, and my take on this is also that, you know, you guys voted us in. I know it wasn't a unanimous decision, it was, but it was, uh, you know, two, two votes. I feel that, in my part, we should uh, stick with what was done, and then as these people step down, bring those people in from the area. I think that's the right thing to do, but that's just my perspective. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mills? I'm Douglas Mills, uh, members of the commission. I'd like to reiterate what uh, both Ms. Lincoln and Mr. Romero have suggested that you consider, that uh, any attempt to politicize PNZ board, I think, would uh, just serve the the community, uh, efforts to make sure that it has broad county representation in all areas of expertise, and uh, the commitment to serve the county are more important than uh, claiming that uh, a commissioner needs to pick people from a district. Uh, we had this discussion when the current policy was formulated, 
review, if we had input, the comment then and comment today is be careful what you propose and formulate because those rules govern your actions. Yes, you have the, the right to change policy, but the perception in the public may be that you're changing it for other reasons. The policy is currently states that uh, in June of each year, the commission can consider replacements. So any action at this point to replace commission uh, board members on PMZ that have term uh, service left, to me, again, is, is ill-advised. You have the capability to change them, but if you're going to change uh, one segment, that may cause you to look at other changes within uh, your approved policy. Uh, as to whether or not uh, PNC board members Hewitt and Quintano should uh, resign, I think council's already suggested that that's an individual decision. Uh, I would not want, however, actions to come before the PNC board that may uh, cause uh, uh, additional difficulties to the future uh, commission after the election, depending upon whomever uh, won, the, won those seats. So I advise you to consider cautiously your proposals for changes and uh, uh, would uh, ask that you uh, take the, the public comments into consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Mr. Romero? Again, Lawrence Romero. And, uh, one further comment that I'd like to make is that one of the things that uh, I would ask you to consider is that planning and, planning and zoning is about geography. A lot of it is about uh, where do we put our community, where do we put our whatever. And so who better to make advisory decisions, or excuse me, to advise on these decisions than the people who actually live in that area. So if we have somebody from uh, a different part of the county that is not germane to our area, how can they make a decision if they're not from there, if they're not totally aware or at least in, in some part as aware of the people who actually live there. So again, my recommendation to you would be that you try to include those people in that area and put it on us to participate and be a part of this county. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Romero. Any further comments? The other reason I think it's important to have term limits on, on planning and zoning is I really feel that they're, they're such an important board that they're almost, um, you know, that they are just, all boards are just as important as the, as the county commission board. But this particular board certainly, if you don't have turnaround in that board, it can kind of control growth if it's not really check into where these people are coming from and how they're looking at things. So, you know, I do support us having term limits, but I do not support us um, cutting people's terms when we decide that we want to change the policy. So, um, I certainly do agree that we should have representation from every district and people coming to the table that can represent all of the people of Torrance County. I just don't think that it would be fair to do that in the middle of their term, certainly when June really isn't that far away. Is there any closing comments before I call for a motion? Thank you, Commissioner Fryer. I have none at this point. I think we've heard equal uh, public comment. Okay, thank you. So we will go to item number six, Planning and Zoning Board Policy Modification. I will call for a motion. In your motion, if you choose to make one, please um, address the verbiage that you would like to have changed or modified in the policy. Is there a motion on the table? I would like to make a motion on Section 3 appointments. <coughs> to the extent possible, the Torrance County Commission shall attempt to appoint interested members 
from six different areas of Torrance County in the effort to protect the interest of the entire county. These members should be equally represented from each district. So that each part of the county is represented. So it's clear that's each commission district? Each commission district, yes. I forget that we have different districts from different. Michelle, could you read that back as you wrote it just so that I can write it down exactly as it's going to be reflected? No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just making sure that it's on the tape. I didn't catch every word of it either. I, I apologize. I, I didn't catch every word of it. Okay. I can give it back to you later once we finalize the disk. I can give you, and, I, and the exact verbiage will be on the minutes, but I, I didn't catch it either. Well, isn't in that something that's going to go before Mr. Wallman for the verbiage also? This, that's just going to be the main content of what's going to be changed, and then you're going to well, I, as, add in. As I understand the motion, okay. it's, it's, you're, you're leaving the first sentence of, of uh, Section 3, and then you're adding a sentence that says, these members shall be equally representative of each commission district. Or words to that effect. Words to that effect, so that each commission district is represented. Two members from each district shall be appointed. Okay, there is a motion on the table. Are you going to put in your motion when you would like it to take effect? <clears throat> Because that's going to help me with my vote. So, okay. Dennis, wait, Dennis has a comment. If you do that, then you're going to have to also. to let them serve out their term. I think both of them are intelligent enough to feel what they need to do. Uh, as far as both of them running for commission, whether they need to resign or not. Okay. All right, so with that, there um, is a motion on the table. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Did you want to say anything else? 
Nope. Oh, okay. I thought mm -hmm. I heard you yeah. clear your clarification on something. Leanne suggested, her suggestion in the motion was that it be till June, and Lonnie, yours was the remainder of the term? Uh, the remainder of the term ends in June. Okay. So, so I'm clear on that. Steve, is that correct that, that uh, uh, Ms. Hewitt and Mr. Quintana's terms end in June? It's just not clear yet. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank So there is a motion on the table. Is there a second? Yes. You did second it? Okay. All right. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. We will now go to item number seven, planning and zoning board appro appointment rescind and reappoint. Is it my understanding then that we would let this die or table this? Well, I don't think you need to table it. I actually think that your last motion covered it. Okay. So, uh, as far as we'll report in June. Okay. Thank you. We will now go to item number eight, commission update, district one. Um, I'm sorry, for the clarity, no action. No action on item number seven because we really took care of it in item number six, right? That, that's correct. Yeah. The, the, the motion in item number six included language that, uh, that, that affected this item. So that's correct. There's no action on this on item number seven because we took care of it. Correct. Okay. Thank you. 